Hello friends and family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff for October 18th, Sunday. Uh, I hope you can't all hear this buzzing <laughs> from my UPS. I apologize. It's right beside the microphone and the power is out and I need to record these videos. So uh, I hope it's not there and I hope it's not too irritating. Um, Yesterday, I mentioned that I would talk about uh, this idea that um, there's, al there's almost a corollary to, uh, to real truth, um, to the truth of reality, to the truth of immediate experience in um, imagination and also in memory but maybe we'll take a look at that tomorrow. This is part of the difficulty with meditating on an imagined object. So if you meditate on, uh, on a synthetic sound, um, a mantra, uh, an image, um, this is really no different than imagining the coming work week. So, okay, I have a week coming up. Oh, let me sit and plan and think about what I'm doing. Or imagining our future. Oh, okay, in five years, I need to save so much for retirement. In 10 years, I need to save so much. Okay, what about this? What about this situation? Those kinds of imaginations, they carry all sorts of burdens. I obviously <laughs> I worry and concern and excitement and everything else. But just because an imagined object is simpler does not mean it doesn't carry burdens. And the biggest burden of an imagined meditation object is that it's not true. So if we are meditating on God, for example, um, should you believe in God, then your perception, our perception as human beings of whatever God might be is inherently incorrect, right? None of us knows what God looks like or how God sounds. And you can make a proclamation. You can say, oh, okay, the sound, there's a belief here in India, right? The sound of Om. Om is the, the sound from the beginning of the universe, the very first sound, the initial sound, and that's the sound of, of God or the sound of creation. Okay, how do you know that? Why do you know that? You know that because someone else told you and somebody else told them and somebody told them. <laughs> There's this kind of chain of belief, but belief in and of itself is a kind of, no matter how close you are to the truth, Right? Or even if you're pointing directly at the truth, okay, maybe om, sound of creation. Is it the om I'm saying with my mouth? Is this om the same as that om? It, like, how far away from the truth do you have to get before it becomes non-truth? And the fact of the matter is, is that you can't, you can't imagine truth by its very nature Imagination is non-truth. These things are mutually exclusive. And so if you meditate on imagination, um, this is fantasy, <laughs> whether it's about, um, you know, tax-free savings accounts and how much money I'll save by the time I'm 65, or if I'm meditating on God, an image of God, a sound of God, it doesn't matter. Um, these, these things are mutually exclusive with truth. Truth, by its very nature, almost by definition, has to be immediate. You have a lot of difficulty with truth about the past, and we'll get to that. But truth can only really, your immediate truth can only really be about the present moment. And it has to be an object that you know to be true. Oh, okay, yes, this thing is true. The breath is not the only such object, but it's a very accessible one. It's there with you all the time. 
it's easy to kind of push <laughs> into into being a little more obvious in case you can't oh i can't feel the breath oh okay breathe a little harder that's not that big a deal you take a few breaths that way you get your attention back and you sturdy yourself um and you will find that this um, pursuit of truth even within the confines of the breath right now okay I get it. No more imagination, no more visualization, no more anything. Uh, no creation of sounds in my head for mantras. Just the breath, just a simple, boring meditation object. How incredibly difficult it is to be honest with yourself about what is really happening there. Because there are all sorts of other things happening, right? Um, your attention is wandering away. Your thoughts are wandering too. That tax-free savings account <laughs> for retirement. Um, and knowing this, trusting in this, that imagination is inherently fabricated, is inherently artificial, um, allows us to pursue this effort a little more vigorously that we can say oh okay yes like i need to meditate on a thing that is true um because of all these other reasons that we'll get into in these future few videos um so this is worthwhile oh, i don't need to like i don't need to add a count to the breath um some people do that I mean, <laughs> and i mean it is this isn't meant to condemn that idea, right? Of the very first meditations I did, I don't know for how many times I would add counts to the breath. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll count my breaths from one to 10. And then when I get to 10, then I'll go back to one. And if I lose track, I go back to one. Um, and you lose track so often. I, mean, I so rarely got to a count of 10 breaths. <laughs> um, but, uh, the utility of that, that's, these are sort of rails you put yourself on, right? Um, not training wheels, I don't want to be that derogatory, but you, you are using this tool uh, to get yourself to a point where you can just follow the breath in total isolation, breath by itself. Um, then uh, even teachers who advocate for breath in total isolation will uh, on occasion permit you this counting of breaths and things like this. So even Leiti Sayata, um, the monk who uh, supposedly kind of kicked off, well, not supposedly, this is within, um, <laughs> this is contemporary, this is recent history, this is the last hundred years or so. Um, so we, we know, but um, that he kind of kicked off the Vipassana tradition among, uh, among householders. Um, his written description of anapana meditation involves starting with a count, and really like, hey, count, to, count to 10, and then see, and then count to 20, um, and see how long you can maintain the count without losing it and dragging yourself back to one again. Um, but at some point, he's like, oh, okay, and then you let go of all of that, and then you just follow the breath. Um, for a lot of people, it's easier just to begin straight up with the breath, just work only with the breath and then you don't have to worry about going back to these crutches or anything like that. But imagination, um, I mean, account is imagination for some value of imagination, but fully imagined meditation objects um, take us away from the truth completely. So tomorrow we will talk about uh, memory. <laughs> imagination, it, no matter how far in the future, um, it's a it's a future fantasy, any sort of imagination. Um, memory, obviously, is always of the past. And these are kind of our, these are the two fields, right, to take us away from uh, the present. So uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow. I hope everyone is taking good care of themselves and uh, taking good care of everyone around them. We'll talk to you tomorrow about the future. No, sorry, the past and memory. <laughs> okay, goodbye.